All right, we're black against int three a DNA. Okay, so I guess we can go knight f six. Yeah, let's play. You know what? Let's play. Let's play d five. I want to play d five. All right, so this is what's called a Coley system, where Blight plays e3. It's a very peaceful, quiet line. And um, Black has many ways to respond to this. But I, I think there's one line which a lot of people don't really talk about, which is to just go... Whoops, no, it was a mouse slip. Bishop d7 is also something people don't talk about. I was going to go Bishop g4. I mean, I guess we'll just do it now. Bishop g4, thank you, gcats. It's not the end of the world, so it just lost the tempo. And uh, c4... Okay, let's go e6. Basically play a queen's gambit structure, except with the bishop outside the pawn chain. Yeah, so the problem with my loss of a tempo is that it's kind of big that he got a chance to develop the bishop. Queen b3. Okay, so... Shall we go crazy? 100 bits, thank you. So what are the options here? This pawn is hanging. The move you often want to avoid, ladies and gentlemen, is b6. b6 creates a lot of weaknesses on that side of the board, all right? Particularly, look at that c6 square. Look at the light squares that b6 weakens. And white has the very nasty move, knight e5. That's the problem. If that knight gets to e5, we start getting under significant pressure. So, from a logical standpoint, what move makes sense, therefore? If I just said knight e5 is going to be a problem, I'm going to make a move which may look like a blunder, and it's just to take the knight. It's just to take the knight. Now, queen takes b7 is often possible in such positions. I think here it's not as not as good as it looks. After queen takes b7, start thinking about what we're going to do. Well, knight d7 is the usual move. Um, and we can play knight d7, but we can actually grab that pawn on g2. Who saw that? That very same bishop can take the pawn, which is why he didn't go for it. Now... We want to have some fun, right? We don't want to just play play like a coward. And what would it mean to have some fun here? I am proposing that we sacrifice this fun. Now, what am I noticing here? I'm looking at white's king, and it's not going to be safe on the king side. It's very far away from castle and queen side. And here's the funny thing. If white takes this pawn on b7, that actually does our bidding for us. Because if then white manages to castle queen side, I argue that the open B file is going to give us very, very nice play. So we basically pretend that there is no threat. We, we develop as we normally would. Now, in such positions, we rarely put the knight on C6. I think you guys know that. We want to be able to have this pawn lever C5. So instead, we develop our knight to D7 anyway, which is probably unsound objectively, but I've had a lot of success with this kind of idea, sacking B7. And it's going to take a while for, for White to figure out whether he's doing this or not. All right. Thank you, Jonah, bro, for the 100 bits. And thank you, Lou Sasso. What should we take with? I think both pieces make a lot of sense. We can take with the pawn, preserve the structure. Taking with the knight is interesting, just to keep the center a little bit more loose, a little bit more open. I kind of like taking with the knight, playing some very provocative chess here. Let's take with the knight. Trying to get him to go e4 and weaken the center. So this is sort of a Grunfeld-style approach, where we don't occupy the center with pawns. We're going to play c5 at some point. Thank you, uh, CJ Hamster, for the 14 months. Are we going to play g6? We might, but I don't think we need to. I think we can just get our bishop out to d6. e4. Okay, I think that's a mistake. Where should we go? Where should we go? What's the most active move here? What's the most energetic move? No, not knight f4. That blunders a knight. Careful. Careful, careful. A lot of you guys are blundering a knight. Knight b4, I think, is definitely the most energetic. Now, we're not threatening to capture the bishop. We do have a hidden threat here, which I'll spell out if he allows it. But, I mean, we want to play as aggressively as possible because white's extremely underdeveloped. And I feel like if we pounce on him we'll be able to squeeze the most out of the position. Now, what does it mean to pounce in such a position? Well, as I discussed, you know, the ultimate goal here is to open up the center. That's the way that you exploit a development advantage. So, there, and we have just the way to do that, as you guys know. And we could go e5, but that gives the queen very nice pressure on f7. I think it's better to go c5. 
Whoa, and 20 bucks from Horned Up Hambo. Very much. Thank you so much. Very, very generous stuff going down here. Thank you, Horned Up Hambo. A3. And the knight drops back to C6, increasing the pressure on the D4 square. Look at this stuff. This is good stuff for black. Knight is coming to D4. Yeah, knight d4 is coming and it's unstoppable. These knights are coming out of the gates. This stuff is very bad for white. I mean, e4, e4 walked right into, right into what we were trying to go for, and then c5 and a3 I think is also a mistake. This knight wants to be on c6. It wants to be on d4. Let's get it to d4. Yeah, but d5 is not dangerous. We go knight d4. Now the queen has to preserve its control over c2, so he's got to kind of go back. And then we can grab the pawn and weaken his center even further. I think this is close to losing for white, believe it or not. Because, yeah, queen h4 is a move to keep in mind. It doesn't do anything as of yet. Okay, so does it make sense why we want to take on d5, right? I mean, we this just makes sense to weaken his center as much as possible. And open the e-file. Later, we can put a rook on e8. If I were white here, I would very seriously consider not recapturing, but he recaptures. This is a pretty instructive moment. I think a lot of people have a hard time in such positions because you start getting the temptation to do something immediate, but the best approach in such a position is to complete your development. Nothing good is going to happen uh, when you have only one piece developed. This knight is great, but without the support of the other pieces, without our king being safe, it's going to be hard to do what we want to do. So as Diamond suggests, we want to go bishop d6 here. This move requires patience. Then we want a castle, and only then are we going to start thinking about more concrete actions. Another instructive move. Whoa! Oh my god, 69! Oh my god. This guy wants me to lose on time. 69 subs! What? Ancient KM King. Woo! <laughs> Are you freaking serious? Oh, my lands. Well, I got to get back to the game. We don't want to lose on time, but thank you for the 69. Damn, girl. Damn, girl. All right, so what do we do here? Uh, do we need to do anything about this knight, or do we allow white to capture it on d4? What do you guys think we should do? Thank you so much, Ancient Cam. So a lot of you are saying, yes, we should absolutely defend the knight. What if I told you the answer is no? We do not need to defend that knight. Let him take this pawn. Let's just castle. Why is that? The reason is because this bishop is the only thing that stands in the way of us dominating down the e-file. Thank you, Dr. Lono, gifting to Ancient M. King. I contend that if white takes on d4 twice, we will simply put a rook on e8. This knight on d7 can jump out to c5 and perhaps even to b3 later. And so we are essentially replacing one advantage with another. One of the hardest things to master in chess is the idea of transforming your advantage. Not often talked about. Because visually, you look at the knight and you say, this is the best thing about our position. We want to preserve the knight. Or at the very least, we don't want to give it away plus a pawn. Uh, except... Okay, WTF? What?! Another 69? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, this is epic. What is what is going on? Oh my god. What is happening right now? Oh my god, this is unbelievable. I don't think two people have ever gifted 69 subs in the history of my channel. I am I am deeply touched right now. This is crazy. No, this is insane. Maybe we are the same person and I donated 138. It's possible. But that would be crazy. So we gotta get back to the game. Again, I was really interrupted. Um many good moves in this position. Many good moves in this position. Uh what does white actually want here? What does white actually want? Well, okay, let me approach this another way. I just think we should activate one of our pieces. I think we should activate one of our pieces. Which one and where should we put it? 
Well, bishop e5 would block the e5, wouldn't do that. Rook c8 allows knight to come to e4. Let's go knight c5. I propose this move. The knight coming to b3. That is a big threat. And also, we are taking the sting out of a potential knight e4. Oh my god. All right. All right. This is insane. Okay, so knight b3 is coming. And I mentioned this idea earlier. The knight is just much better on c5. Even if we don't get to b3, everybody should understand that the knight here is excellently placed. Wow, 28, 25. Now think about, a good thing to think about on our opponent's turn here is where we want our pieces to be, right? Okay, so we certainly do not want to play knight b3 here in blunder checkmate in one. In fact, we don't have too many ways to defend against this mate threat. But we have f6, which is perfectly acceptable in such a position because there are no other ways for him to create any other threats. f6 is fine, blunting the queen. And if anything, it creates a stronghold on e5. Yeah, bishop f8 was possible, but why overload? Why overload the bishop? Thank you, friendly fox. Queen d1. Yeah, now the king is basically busted. And one thing to keep in mind in such positions is that um, when you are attacking, you should take free material if it lies by the side of the road. So one good thing to do is essentially take a pawn or take a couple of pawns so that if the attack doesn't work out, if the attack doesn't work out, you're still going to have something to fall back on. So the bishop is going to come back to e5, which is a great square. We might as well grab that pawn while we're at it, right? And then bring the bishop back. I have to say, white's doing a great job defending here. He's making it very hard on me. But um, now the material is equal, so he doesn't even have anything to show for it. And we've got very nice, very nicely placed pieces. Rook c1. All right. So to me, it seems logical that the only piece we have not activated yet and put into the attack is the queen. Think about where you want the queen to be. Let's reverse engineer this. Rather than just looking at random moves, think about where you want the queen to participate in the attack. Well, to me, queen b6 isn't as good because of b4. I don't like queen b6. I want the queen on the king's side where everything is abandoned. I want the queen here or here. And so I like the move queen to d7 to get it to h3. We could have also gone f5, pawn to f5, paving away paving open the pathway to h4. That would have been, I think, equally as good. Jay Gruza, thank you for the uh, five months. Whew. All right. King f1, great move. X, I profit, thank you. Now, before we play queen h3... I propose starting with bishop f4, and I'm going to play this move a little bit quickly right now just because I want to save time, but you guys are going to understand the idea of this move soon. Thank you, funds for the prime. This should be five. All right. Let's go to h3. Let's go to h3. And if I've calculated this correctly, we are going to be winning here. Thank you very much for doing the speedrun. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. I actually missed one detail here. Uh, you succeeded in bamboozling me. Now, can we just take on c1, perhaps? Maybe we can just take the rook. And I was going to take the bishop and try to mate him. But now I think, I think it's a better idea just to restore the material balance and uh, then just win positionally or try to win positionally. Okay, I definitely could have played this better than I did, for 100% for sure. But it's fine. I also was a little bamboozled. Thank you, still Tipton. Okay, let's snag another pawn. Now we're a pawn up, though, which is good. No, I mean, of course, black is still winning, I think, pretty handily. Okay, one little detail I want to point out before we enter the time pressure stage. 
Um, if white ever captures on f6 with a queen trying to use the pin, what trick do we have there? We can actually set a trap that involves quote unquote blundering the f6 pawn. Queen takes g2. Yeah, that's a common idea. Taking that rook out with check so that the queen will no longer be pinned. 94. All right. 94 is another excellent move. Man, this guy is just on, on the ball today. Okay, we got to take it. Okay, what should we do now? Oh my god, there's a crazy line there. Hmm. It's not so simple. I think we can take... We can just take the pawn. Yeah, rook c8, I'll show you guys after the game, but rook c8, there was an insane... There was an insane idea that white had there, which I think actually works. I'll, I'll, again, I'll show you after the game why rook c8, I think, was bad. But this is going to be hairy, d6. Okay, so one thing we could do is go like this, take and take e4. But then queen b3 is going to come and win our bishop. So instead what we could do is we could drop this queen back to e6. And after d7, blockade with rook d8. And we can try to win that pawn. Close. This game is going to be close. Or go bishop e7, which might be even better. Just get that bishop out of the danger zone. But I do like the idea also of just blockading this pawn. Just blockade it, just so there's nothing could possibly happen with promotion. Thank you, Will Ferg, for the sub. Okay, so bishop c4 we have to be very careful about, although it's currently not possible. A move like queen d3 would be very dangerous for us here. I have a response to it planned, but... That would probably be the best thing that white can do here to try to test us. Queen a4. Same general concept. If we move our bishop, he, he pins our queen and wins the game. So what should we do? What do you guys think we should play here? So what we need to do is we need to defend this bishop with our queen to sidestep the pin number one and number two defend the bishop. We need to go queen to d6 here. Defending this bishop. Or queen e7, but I like queen d6 because now we have the idea of checkmating him on d1 if the queen ever loses control over this square. So these kind of small points you always have to factor in, like where to put the queen. If there's two squares, compare them. You know, do you have access to any other potential squares from one square as opposed to another? Okay. Boom. Now, king f8 might, like, you know, might be interesting, but I think king h8 is much safer. And queen f7 here is a very common type of blunder. Like, missing this mate is easy. e5, whoa. Now, that seems to be just panic. Maybe just take this pawn. No, we're up a million pawns here. This is winning for black, objectively. King g1, good move. What should we do here? What should we do here? Now remember, queen f7 is a pretty significant threat. We don't want to allow that move. So the queen has done its job on d6. We have to, number one, keep the bishop protected. Number two, I would say we need to cover the f7 square. Queen f7 is a big threat. You guys are not responding to it. We have to go queen e7, right? We have to stop the queen from coming to f7. Then we might play a6 and accomplish our main plan. Yeah, so now it's time for a6. And white can resign because the bishop is actually trapped. Bishop a4, b5. And white will lose not only the bishop, but also the pawn. Good game. Very well played by our opponent, who basically climbed back from, I would say, a losing position. Now, I was a little distracted to be in my defense, but nonetheless, it was good stuff. Quickly, let's just recap a couple of points here. Um... Queen b3, bishop takes f3. Yeah, so here, after queen takes b7, we had this move, bishop takes g2, attacking the rook. So that's why I think he took. Takes, knight takes d5. Now, probably the best thing to do for white is to take the pawn. And I would have gone rook b8. Um, queen takes a7 and then c5 to make the center go boom. This queen is in big trouble here. I, li I love these types of positions for black, even if they're unsound. So cd, knight d5, e4, big mistake, weakening the center. Knight b4, attack the center, reroute the knight, put it on d4, trade on d5, open the e-file, develop your pieces. 
And I think that here, castles takes takes. Somewhere here, I made a mistake. I think rookie eight was fine, but after knight c3, I actually think this move was not good. I think this move was not good because I think it commits too early. And yeah, according to the computer, the best move would have been rook c8, which I saw. Actually, no, the best move would have been bishop to e5 or rook c8. Bishop e5 is probably the best. After queen d2, what's the point of bishop e5? It's not actually to improve the bishop. The point of bishop e5 is actually to create a possible que uh, anchor point for the queen where it pressures up to. So th this is the big game changer because now white's king can't really hide out on the king side. I didn't want it because it blocked the e-file. What was my mistake? My mistake was that I didn't think flexibly enough. I thought the e-file is the end-all be-all. But in reality, you have to give up a little bit to get a lot. And here you have to give up temporary control over the e-file, though you still are controlling it to get the queen to h4. Well, if White Castle's queen side, you have the pin, which is an important detail as well. It all seems very easy with the engine. Thank you, mating threat, five months. So knight c5, rook g1, good move. It's a good move because if he had gone rook d1 to stop the fork, I would have gone queen g5 and beat him to the punch. I mean, obviously now it's impossible. But rook g1 is a very nice insertion. This, this stops my queen from accessing this diagonal, right? Queen d1, bishop takes h2, and now it's just not quite as clear, even though, of course, black is much, much better. Queen d7. Yeah, bishop f4 maybe was also not ideal. Takes, bishop c1. I'm checking with an engine, though. This is all correct. Here, there, there, there. No, black is... I mean, we were always much better. I think all the way until the end. Now, why didn't I go uh, rook c8? That's really the important question. The reason I didn't go rook c8 is because of d6. And there's a beautiful line here. Rook c1. Queen takes c1. Bishop c1, d7. And white is winning. Amazingly, the pawn is unstoppable. Look at this bishop guarding d3 and defending the pawn at the same time. So that I calculated and decided against going for this. Yeah. So for that reason... I decided to take on a3, number one winning a pawn, number two trying to get the bishop back to d6 to blockade the pawn. Well, Plonga Bune, the point of knight c5 is that it, it doesn't stop knight e4, I explained it misleadingly. It prevents knight e4 because of knight b3, not because the knight actually controls the square, if that makes sense. Queen h1 check, then just rook g1. Okay. Uh, queen h1 doesn't do anything. Rook g1, queen h3, king e2, and the king actually evades the checks. Queen h5, king e1. Black can take the bishop, but not stop promotion. Yeah, so you got to be careful until the end. Pass pawns. That's one of the themes of today. All right, guys. I think that's enough. Um, this has been an epic stream. I'll, I'll give any last chances. For, if anybody else wants to give 69 subs, I'll take it. <laughs> But um, very sneaky stuff here. Yeah, this was a nice game. Nice way to end, I think. All right, guys. I owe Ben a raid. I'll, I'll throw, him, throw him the peeps. Thanks again, everybody. Much appreciated. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you had a good time. See you guys later. Bye.